Everything you have to know about dangerous genetically modified foods by international best-selling author and filmmaker Jeffrey M. Smith. Mr. Smith is the executive director of the Institute for Responsible Technology and the leading spokesperson on the health dangers of genetically modified organisms. His first book, Seeds of Deception, became the world's best-selling and number one rated book on GMOs. His second, Genetic Roulette, is the authoritative work that presents irrefutable evidence that genetically modified foods are harmful. Former UK Environment Minister Michael Meacher says the revelations in Genetic Roulette may change the global course of events this century. And he describes Jeffrey Smith as one of the great campaigners of our age. Mr. Smith has counseled world leaders from every continent and has been quoted by hundreds of media outlets, including the New York Times, Washington Post, BBC World Service, Nature, New Scientist, and Time Magazine. The following keynote speech took place at the Weston A. Price Foundation Conference in November 2008. Please join me in welcoming Jeffrey Smith. Thank you, Sally, and all Weston A. Price Foundation. What a magnificent environment you give us to have fun in. Thank you so much. We are all activists. How many people consider themselves foodies? Yes, yes. All right, here's a loaded question. How many people have convinced several others to change their diet? <laughs> Over 50? Over 1,000? <laughs> yes. We are, you know, the seed crystal. In nature, there's the seed crystal that changes the entire structure of the organism or organization. And I'll tell you, with the genetically engineered foods, the seed crystal is planted and it's moving. We have a phenomenal opportunity over the next 14, 15 months to kick GMOs out of the food supply. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And I know from whence I speak, genetically engineered bovine growth hormone. Remember that? Well, it will soon be history. Yes. In March of this year, Walmart said, no more RBGH in our milk. <laughs> Starbucks, Kroger's, Publix, at least 40 of the top 100 dairies so far. So what happened? The seed crystals at work. It turns out, others call a tipping point. A small percentage of consumers changing brand choices based on information. All of a sudden, using a product becomes a marketing liability, and it moves the market. So if you look at the actual New York Times reports and the Washington Post and the Boston Globe, they talk about tipping point. They talk about explosion in the industry. How did this arise? Well, it turns out a few of us did it on purpose. <laughs> it was no accident. We simply had to explain, oh yeah, that milk, the one with more pus. <laughs> oh, and more antibiotics, and more bovine growth hormone, and more IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1. You know, the stuff where if it's in high levels in your blood, it increases cancer and incidence of fraternal twins. Oh, that milk. You want that milk? <laughs> so we started spreading it around, writing about it in books, giving PowerPoint presentations, having postcards go to different dairies, and the tipping point was reached about two and a half years ago. Tillamook, the largest cheese, second largest cheese, cheese chunk producer in the United States, went RBGH free, and then it was like the domino effect, and we're still watching it. And three weeks ago, Monsanto finalized its sale of its bovine growth hormone 
to El Lanco, Eli Lilly's uh, veterinarian division, because Monsanto realized the days of bovine growth hormone are over. Yeah. Let's give us some, all right. So we've got the formula. We know that we can convince a small percentage of consumers to change their brands, and the tipping point happens. So what about genetically engineered foods? What is going to cause Kraft or Nestle's or Hershey's to hold on to its genetically engineered corn? Very little. There's no consumer benefit. Not a single one. Not like trans fats, which gives you something, and aspartame, which theoretically gives you something and takes a lot away. There's no consumer benefits to GMOs. You can change to non-GMO without even changing the formula for your product. Just switch to the non-GM corn, the non-GM soy. So if we get about, let's say, 5% of US consumers, 15 million people, avoiding brands that contain genetically engineered foods, I think that's more than we need to get Kraft and Hershey's and Nestle's and McDonald's and others to switch to non-GM because they'll see a reduction in their market share, they'll see a trend, and they'll simply tell their supply chain, use the non-GM varieties. You know, when the tipping point was hit in Europe in April of 1999, within one week, virtually the entire food supply in Europe all the major manufacturers committed to remove GM ingredients for Europe. But those same companies feed us GMOs because in the United States we haven't hit the tipping point. And part of the reason we haven't hit the tipping point is that people don't really understand what products are GM, what products are genetically modified. There's no labeling here. And CBS New York Times poll this year said that if GMOs were labeled, 53% of Americans would not eat them. If one in 10 of those, if nine out of 10 of those people were lying, it's still enough to hit the tipping point. So we just need to give the information about which products are GM and which products are non-GM and add a little bit of motivation by describing how eating a genetically engineered corn chip might turn your intestinal flora into living pesticide factories. <laughs> so we've created the Campaign for Healthier Eating in America, whose slogan is, healthy eating starts with no GMOs. So all you foodies out there, this is your mantra this year coming. So you have all these things to give to all of your friends and your devotees and your patients. And you want to talk about raw milk and you want to talk about soy. But healthy eating starts with no GMOs. Because by the end of next year, we expect to hit the tipping point. And we're going to do it here. Now. We have created non-GMO education centers, and on the top of that are non-GMO shopping guides, which list the brands that are non-GM and list samples of products that are GM, and also describes how you can evaluate a product by reading the ingredients and looking at the, at the packaging to determine if it's GM or not. So we are giving. We're not waiting for the government to label. We'll do it ourselves. And we're going to put these non-GMO, we are already putting these non-GMO education centers in natural food stores around the country. So if you meet me after the talk over there, you all get your free non-GMO shopping guide. You all get your health risks brochure, which encourages you to use the shopping guide. For those of you that are doctors, we have a package for your patients. 